Today I'm changing the brakes on my 2008 Land Rover LR3. First off, I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. I've changed brakes before on many vehicles and I have some videos for those vehicles. But I understand you might want to see the actual brakes changed on your particular vehicle, in this case, a Land Rover. Let's get started. You know, it's just a good habit to raise your Land Rover all the way up anytime you want to take the tire off. So right now, I'm about to raise it and then I'll jack it up to take the tire off. I'm just going to use the remote to raise it up to off-road height. Okay, first of all, that's so cool every time I do it. Now that it's raised to off-road height, the same steps apply. I'm going to loosen the lug nuts, jack the car up, support it on blocks or stands. I'm using my long breaker bar with a 22 millimeter socket. I'm going to break the initial tightness of the lug nuts. I forgot to mention, the back tires have both been chopped, both back tires. I have the emergency brake, I have the emergency brake set, I have my block of wood, and I'm using a three ton jack. <sighs> Anytime you're jacking your vehicle up using a floor jack or the jack that came with the car, make sure your jack is under the frame so that the car doesn't fall on you or you don't damage the vehicle by jacking it up. I'm switching over to my impact gun just to take these lug nuts off a little easier. Under this plastic cover in your engine bay is where your master cylinder is located. I like to take the cap off to release the pressure so it makes it easier when I'm depressing the piston back into the caliper. You simply just take the cap off and all the pressure is released. Right here, let me show you what you're looking at. Here's your rotor, here's your caliper housing, here's the caliper, and here's the brake pads. Now, if you ever need to take your rotor off, there's this screw right here, you take this screw out, you're going to take your caliper off and then your caliper housing. Caliper housing just has a bolt in the top and in the bottom that comes out, rotor comes off. Right now, like I said, we're just doing the brakes. So all we're going to do is take off the caliper. We're going to depress the piston. And since I'm here, I'm going to check the rotor. You want to check to see that it's very smooth there's no scratches, there's no dents, there's no chips. Mine looks good, so I'm just going to move on to the brakes. On my ratchet, I have a 13 millimeter socket to take off this 13 millimeter bolt that's holding the caliper at the top. There's also one right here under the bottom. It's just these two. This is a 17 millimeter wrench and your wrench goes right on the back side of that bolt so when you turn it can hold it in place so let's see I will have to say that getting maybe you might have to watch the thickness of your wrench because getting it in between the caliper housing and a little the little washer it was a little tight so I had to do a little bit of wiggling but as you see it goes right on so I'll take the top off and get to the bottom top looks just like the bottom right here is the bottom this is what the caliper bolt looks like not that big it's about an inch inch and a half you see that this is sliding back and forth very easily the bottom does the exact same if yours doesn't slide back and forth 
you might want to re-grease it because you need this to slide in and out. Mine slides very free, so I'm just move to the next step. Now, right here, my caliper. The caliper, it's still pretty tight, but it did just come right off. Now, pretty tight, comes right on off. Ah. Just to let you know, this is the heaviest caliper I've ever held in my life. Right here is your sensor wire. So let's take this out, of, get this out of the way, and it's connected right here to the bleeder, bleeder screw valve. This caliper is extremely heavy, and you can see that the pistons are pushed out pretty far. So I'm going to take my C clamp and one of these old pads. Take one of the old pads, sit the old pad right here, and compress this piston. I'm simply tightening the C clamp down, and it's depressing the piston. Okay, I've turned the C clamp as far as it would go, and as you can see, the piston has been pressed back into the housing. I'm going to back the C clamp off, and as you can see, the piston has went back in. I'm going to sit the C clamp, I mean, I'm going to sit the caliper out of the way so we can look at the sensor wire. If this is broke or damaged, you want to replace it. As you see, your brake pads, they just pop right on out. Here's the rear brake pad, I mean, here's the brake pad that was on the inside of my rotor. Look at the difference. Yeah, it was about halfway done. It was about time to change. So, in order to put your brake pads on, first you wanna take off your hardware. I simply take them off one at a time, and I hold them in my hand, and I match the new hardware, and I make sure it goes on just how the old one came off. They simply snap into place. I do the exact same with the top. I pull it down. It looks just like this in hand. So I put the new one on just how the old one came off. Again, they simply snap into place. Make sure they're snug. I take my new brake pad. Put it in the bottom first, slides right into place. Now, here's the rear one. Again, put it in, slides right into place. That's simple. Before I put the caliper back on, I wanna show you something. Right here is your speed sensor wire. Now, You simply, it just slots into place like that, so the speed sensor wire will slide into your new brake pad. Once you attach the caliper over the brake pads, you just line this up, snap it into place. Now it's time for reassembly. You wanna make sure that you hand tighten your caliper bolts so that you don't script the screws, do the top and bottom, then you will tighten them down to specs. Make sure that you don't forget to put your speed sensor wire back on. Again, it just clips into place. Everything's back on, sensor wires popped in, the brakes are in, the caliper's on, the caliper bolts are lined up. Time to tighten the top bolt. Just like when you're taking it off, could you hold? Now that the brakes are on and everything is ready to go, it's time to bleed the brakes. Right here on where your speed sensor wire is, you take off the little cover, speed sensor wire just slides right on off. This is a 12 millimeter socket. I'm going to release the tension. It's released. I have a towel under the rotor. As you see it's dripping, I have another towel. I have my assistant in the car. I'm going to tell them to pump the brakes. Pump, hold, pump, hold, and then you'll be done with the bleeding. Okay, go ahead and pump. 
up, pump. Now hold. So I will tighten it. Okay, pump. Okay, that was just checking, nothing's leaking, and then you're done. Put your, put the speed sensor back on, put your cover on, you're done. Okay, now I'm just sliding the tire from up under the car. I'm gonna put the tire on, get my lug nuts, and I hand tighten the lug nuts. It's important that you hand tighten the lug nuts so you don't strip the threads. Then I get my impact gun, I snug the lug nuts to the tire, raise the vehicle, take my blocks out, lower the vehicle onto the ground, get my torque wrench, torque the, uh, torque the lug nuts to specs, which is usually 100 foot pounds, and then I'm done. Now that we're all done, it's time to put brake fluid back into the master cylinder. If it's at its appropriate levels, you don't have to do anything. If it's not, you fill it with the appropriate brake fluid. Okay. As you see, that's just how easy it is to change the brakes on a Land Rover LR3. Now, the only thing left for me to do is to lower it and take it for a test drive. Again, I'm going to use the remote. As you see, it's just that easy to change the brakes. With a few differences, like raising the, lo ra raising the rover and your speed sensor, it's pretty much identical to all brakes. The only reason I make these videos is just to show that it's not that hard to work on luxury cars. As usual, I appreciate you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up and I'll get back at you. You guys have a good one.